Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, we've got a uh, custom build here that is not booting. It has no power, so I'm told that when you push the power button, nothing happens. No lights, no sounds, no nothing. So let's take a look at this. We've got fans on the side panel here, so I'm just going to watch out for... Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, we've seen this one before. Well, I've seen this one before. I seem to remember the last time I saw it, I was looking at the power supply going, that's really crap and it's probably going to fail at some point. All right, so we've got power in the back. We've got a keyboard and mouse plugged in. All right, let's see what it does. All right, it is, as the customer described, stone dead. Let's just plug that back in. That's one of the front lights or something. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Um, so yeah, this is almost certainly gonna be a crap power supply. Right, let's switch that off. Um, first thing we're gonna do is try another power supply. And as you can see, the Antec is next to my left hand already. Not that I expect this to be a dead power supply or anything. Cool, that's proper stiff that is. There we go. Yeah, we've got other power adapters to run this graphics card as well. We've got a uh, a dual Molex to six pin, then a six to eight adapter. This this power supply has probably fallen under, fallen over under the load here. So we'll find out. Right, that out, that out. Ignition. Uh, surprise, surprise, it starts. Are we going to get post? This graphics card fans are doing weird things. Oh, we've got no power to the graphics card. I'm an idiot. Take two. Power at the back. Power button. There we go. Those power supply fans are spinning properly now. There we go, we got post. New power supply. Okay, so before we continue, let's have a quick chat about why this power supply has probably failed. And I'm doing this by voiceover because I did a really bad job of explaining it in the video. So, this power supply is a 500 watt power supply and it's really naff quality, but still, you would imagine that 500 watts should be okay, right? Well, let's take a look at the tech specs on the side of it and we'll see why that is not all right. So, this power supply has a single 12 volt rail. Now that on its own is not the end of the world. It's quite common to see single, dual, triple or quad uh, 12 volt rails. However, the problem is, is that it has a single 12 volt rail that is only 22 amps. Now, in order to discover what wattage that rail will deliver, we take the volts and we times it by the amps. And 12 times 22 gives us 264 watts. So, Despite this being a 500 watt power supply, it can only deliver just over half of that, just 264 watts on the 12 volt rail. And it's the 12 volt rail that's powering most of the computer, including your CPU and your graphics card. Now, if we have a look at the Antec power supply in comparison, which granted is a thousand watts, but if you even half the numbers, we can see that we've got quad 40 amp 12 volt rails. Now, if we half that, uh, to account for it being a kilowatt power supply, we still have dual 40 amp rails. And the Antec on its own can deliver a full thousand watts just on those 12 volt rails. So that is the big difference between a good quality power supply and a bad one. It's quite common on good quality power supplies to see the power supply deliver its full label wattage just on the 12 volt rail. Whereas this thing only delivers just over half of it. So, if we do a little bit of mathematics to prove this, the graphics card, that 960, that's using 120 watts. You can look it up on the, on the GeForce website and you'll see that. The CPU in this is an AMD A4 APU, which runs at 65 watts. So that gives us 185 watts gone on the, C on the CPU and the GPU. So that only leaves us with 80 watts left to power the rest of the computer. Now, previous videos I've done have shown that most computers will actually only use somewhere between sort of 200 and 300 watts under load. 
But we have to remember that you don't want to be sitting on the actual limit of the power supply, which is exactly what's been going on here. You must have that little bit of overhead for burst usage. And that is what we didn't have on this thing. By the time we've accounted for the motherboard, the fans and everything else, it's easy to see why this 12 volt rail has just pure given up. The next day, we were back with a new power supply. I've got an EVGA 500 watt here. So this is a uh, this is a budget power supply. However, EVGA are a great brand. Rumor has it these have Seasonic internals, but I've never confirmed that. So make of that what you will. But it's a nice beefy power supply with real connectors on it, real cables, and real power rails. So as per my little rant on power rails just there, let's have a quick look at this one. So this one's running a single 12 volt rail as well. And uh, let me just um, flip things around so you can see. And so as you can see on this one, we have a single 12 volt rail, but this one delivers 40 amps. So despite the fact that this is a 500 watt, 500 watt, we have nearly twice the power coming out of the 12 volt rail. And the 12 volt rail alone will do 480 watts. Now notice how all of these add up to greater than the wattage. 480 plus 120 uh, is 600 watts. So basically the rule is um, it, it can do, each individual rail can go higher than the total wattage. However, the total output power must not exceed 500. So that's how you get 480 out of the 500 is the individual rails are overrated, which means the power supply can load balance depending on what kind of load is being placed on it. Whereas this one, this one can't balance jack because it's got no power on its 12 volt line. So let's get this thing out and get this thing put in. This has cellophane on it, I know it, and it has to come off. There we go, oh yeah, there we go. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, that's so sad for me. Okay, right, that's our basic install done. Let's flip this over and we're just gonna tie back a few of those ro um, ropey noodly cables around the back. We're not doing a big cable tidy job on this because this, ca this case doesn't even have a window in it. So there's no point. So uh, let's flip this over and just make sure that none of the cables are gonna strain to fans or anything annoying like that. There we go. So we're just pulling these cables back here out of sight and we've just tied them back with a wire tie there. So it's nice and accessible, it's nice and easy to get those out if they're needed. Don't have to cut everything loose. But if we flip the computer over again, they've now been pulled out of sight. So they're not going to fall into the middle of the bay or into any fans. All right, so past that, we're done. Uh, so this thing is all finished, we'll give it a software service and it's ready to go back out with a not crap power supply. So next thing for the future of this one is get rid of this poxy little APU that's in it. Other than that, this thing is slowly turning into a nice computer with its GTX 960 and its tasty power supply. So I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.